Hi everyone, I'm David, and this is my first video on YouTube. For my videos, I will talk about daily life, people, culture, food, history, etc. in China. I will be speaking English in my videos, which may not be very good, but I will do my best to express what I want to say and hope you enjoy it. In China, Dama refers to middle-aged and elderly women aged 50 to 70, who become famous after buying gold globally in 2013, and appeared in major attractions around the world. It's a mysterious existence all over China and the world. Square dance, fancy photo, big purchase, not only have they become one of the most frequently used symbols in China, but they have also become a controversy throughout China and the world. It can be said that most people inevitably meet damas when in China. And if you are a foreigner, living in a tourist area or major city, you may more or less meet the Chinese damas. But whenever you mention this word, what do you think of first? Low noises in public places, low quality, or the elderly lady in bright clothes from the east? Okay, you may have seen the pictures below. In China, there is often negative news about damas on, on the internet, such as making an awful thing in public places, jumping to quiz, deliberately sitting communal facilities, square dance music disturb the resident, etc., and go aboard to buy gold and buy various luxury goods. But what about damas in the real life? They do the square dance, sing at karaoke parlors, and travel together for group tours. And, in the daily life of the family, they are wives, mothers, or even grandmas, doing the same things as you and me. They may have some differences in the habits, different from you and me, but most of them are original people. Someone once wrote about various negative kinds of Chinese damas. For these people, Chinese damas are vulgar and uncultured groups. This kind of generalization and labeling is debatable. It is undeniable that the group of Chinese dhammas good and bad mixed. However, only a few dhammas make an awful din in public places, no rules and behave rudely. This is determined by the individual's culture and upbringing. In fact, in the group of Chinese dhamma, whenever they are intellectual women who are knowledgeable and rational, or retired female workers who understand politeness and cultivating. They still account for the majority. Therefore, it is not available to simply and roughly label any person or group and intentionally exaggerate a specific group of people. The cuteness, kindness, rationality, and the straightforwardness of the Chinese dhammas are what reveals to everyone. They are just like friendly and kind neighbors live around us. So, what is the real Chinese dhamma? Just listen to me, please. This is my mother, born in 1963 in the countryside of Jinan. Born in the harshest years of China, the real hard time. After war, the family moved to the Chitadong city with grandpa's job transfer, leaving only the aunt and uncle in the rural Jinan. In the early years of the reform and the opening up, my mom used to sell goods, but eventually went to work in a state-run cotton mill and married my father through a referral. After that, I was born. To be precise, I was raised by my grandmother. The state-run factories were third shift and my father worked in the army and only came back a few times a year. 
After half a lifetime of farming, it was finally easier for my grandma. What she should do was a household chore. I was under the impression that mom was always at work, and I could never find her. After I went to kindergarten, sometimes my mom picked me. After I finished junior high school, we moved away from my grandmother's house to a new home close to senior high school, and so on until my mom retired. She wasn't idle. Working for someone else in another shop, and subsidizing the family. An evening walk, him, an evening walk by chance, she got involved in square dancing, met new friends, and finally, she started a new life. As for what her life is like now, we will see what happens next episode.